these are going to be my new garden edge for this patch over here. So this is on a pretty steep incline and what we're hoping to do is put an edge on the bed so that we can fill it deeper on the on the side over here and shallower on the side over here and make something that's you know well level um, and I'm hoping that it's super pretty and then we can get some moss growing in between the logs but here we go so we're gonna put the logs in but I want them rolling all over the place so we're gonna put in a shallow trench that they can kind of set into and then we can stack up and it'll all stay in the same place okay I trust you and I believe in you that's how it looks on paper Lort, we have so much going on here. Good morning, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we are here in Growing Zone 6B in New England. And we have passed our last frost date, thank goodness. Um, and we did it with, my goodness, two days of intense heat during which I had my tomatoes hardening off over here. So today we're gonna try and get them into the garden. Um, and I just can't wait. I'm so thrilled about this. Let me show you what's going on. We have this mushroom thing that is just stealing my heart. I'm sure it came in with the brown cow mulch. I thought for sure with all the heat over the last couple of days that these would dry up and die, but they have not. And it looks like the rainstorm just reinvigorated them. It gives it this kind of fairy tale feel. The original plan was the peas would come up, they would be just about spent, and then I'd put my tomatoes in. That's not what's going to happen. The peas need some time. They haven't even started to fruit yet. So clearly we're gonna be intercropping our tomatoes and our peas together. I'm gonna to just be really, really careful when I put the tomatoes in. They will be planted much, much deeper than the peas, so hopefully this won't be a problem. Turns out I planted an awful lot of tomatoes. I am 100% sure I will not be able to get all of these folks onto these two trellises. Um, some of them will still set up over here where the beans were last year, and some of them are gonna move on to my mother. <laughs> what tomatoes did you plant, you're asking? I've got some Abe Lincolns, and I've got some Castelludo Florentino going in also. Um, I have only two of these guys. These are those get stuffed tomatoes. I'm gonna be really watching over these ones. Um, and then we've got the round pots are gonna be Korean long. What are you? These are prairie fire. I've got a whole bunch of these. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, 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 spoon tomatoes. These are supposed to bear tiny little caviar-like tomatoes. I can't wait to see how these come up. And then what else have we got here? I picked up a couple of black crims at the Cotyledon Farms sale yesterday, so I'm looking forward to those. I don't know off the top of my head which ones are determinants and which ones are indeterminants. So, I may be putting up more support for tomatoes as we go forward. But today is just about getting them into the ground. The last two days were roasting hot and then we got a half inch of rain overnight in like this violent, delicious storm. And so the ground is nice and soft and soaked and I'm really looking forward to getting these folks in the ground. I think the trickiest part of this is going to be digging holes without disturbing the peas. I feel like I'm up to the challenge though. Oh, 
Let me show you this. This is amazing. Do you see these beautiful stripes in here? This gray material. This, this is all mycorrhizal business in there. So we've got nice, healthy soil. And it also explains the mushrooms. So yeah, we've got lots of this good, healthy mycorrhizal inoculant in the soil already, which is going to help with the roots. So with tomatoes, you want to dig a nice deep hole. Any part of this stem that goes beneath the dirt is going to root out and give us a nice strong tomato. So what I'm going to do is try and bury them up to about here. And I'm going to take these leaves off. We're going to make sure no leaves are touching the ground. And there we go. So some people I know like to plant an egg or a fish head. Um, I'm not that guy, really. I just put the tomato in and snap off any leaves that are touching the ground and call it a day. If you were hanging out last year, you'll know that we did the tomatoes over there last year. Um, and we, my goodness, we had early blight, we had late blight, we had blight blight. It, there was so much blight. So what I'm not doing is planting nightshades back over there again. We're going to do all the tomatoes, tomatillos, and, um, and eggplants over on this side of the garden. And on that side of the garden, we will do our cucumbers and squash. I will admit to having lost most of the tags already. I have a good idea of what's going on in here, but there is certainly gonna be a part of the summer where I'm like, yo, I have no idea what this is. It's delicious though. I think I'm gonna put the tomatillos on the side there where the beans were last year. And in front of them, I'm gonna put in eggplants, but they're not quite ready yet. So we're still hanging on with those. It's starting to come together. It's really feeling more like my own garden now. I'm just thrilled. Until the nightshades are in, I never feel like it's a proper garden. But at this point, I have put all the tomatoes in, forgotten which ones they are, and hey, that sounds good, right? We're right where we should be. We have gotten the garden trimmed up and a little shallow trench going around the outside that the logs can rest into so they don't all roll away. And now Sue can start the fun job of stacking. It's like Legos. I'm so into it. Last year we had the okra and the sunflowers in here and I am so looking forward to having them there again. It's this beautiful bright splash of colors that you can see coming out from the street and I just, I just love it. So let's do that again this year. Three trailer fulls of logs, large, medium, small. And uh, I'm gonna try to, once it gets cooler, so in, in the autumn, I'm gonna try to encourage a little moss along there. That'll be pretty. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Moss or mushrooms? Maybe mushrooms. We'll see. And then okra and more sunflowers. Maybe some nasturtium. I am nasturtium mad this year. I just can't get enough of them. So I'll probably be tucking some nasturtium seeds in there too. Um, we can tuck them between the logs. Oh, like put a little dirt in and yeah. maybe we'll do that. Ooh. All right, I'll start some, I'll start some more seeds. Gosh, what a trial. I'll have to start more nasturtium seeds. Mm. So rough, so <laughs> rough. So this should level the whole thing off. We're gonna need quite a bit of fill down there at the low end, but not very much over here. We're gonna give it a few weeks before we fill this and let those plants that are in there right now get a little bit taller. So that's where we are. Tomatoes are in, tomatillos are in, and this bed is built. So I'd say that's pretty good. On to the next project. On to the next project. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today while we got this put together, and we will catch you up soon. Take care. Bye-bye.
So there it is. Ha, ha, ha.